Hi, this is Paul Callimore. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to add headers and footers to a novel. Um, although I'm working with a novel in this video, what I'm going to show you will equally apply to any other book that you're looking to format and do sort of semi-complicated things in the uh, formatting for the headers and footers. Uh, there are particular considerations for a novel and I'm, I'm going to begin by discussing those. So if you look at these first two pages uh, of my novel, what, what we're looking at is what, the, what is generally referred to as the front matter and you'll see that in the front matter there are no running headers or footers, there's no page numbers at the bottom, there's no headers at the top of the pages. If we go through the rest of the front matter you see that the same applies, no headers or footers in these first six pages. On the seventh page uh, we begin the chapters and you'll see that in chapter one page one there's no header at the top but there is a number at the bottom if we look at page two of chapter one of course there's a number at the bottom uh, but at the top we've got the book's title this is on the first even page even numbered page of the uh, book then if we go to the third page we have got the chapter title and that runs through the e each chapter. For each chapter we're going to see the uh, chapter title on the odd pages and on the even pages we've got the book's title. So I'll just run down and show you how that happens throughout the book. So that's the end of chapter one and then we move on to chapter two. Again, no header at the top, page number at the bottom, book's title on the first even page of that chapter and then we've got the chapter title on the odd page. So that's fairly typical. You don't have to put uh, on these pages, let's go back, I, I, as I say I've, I've elected to put the book's title on one page and the uh, chapter title on the other one. You don't have to put those two things in. You could put in um, the author's name and the book title or maybe just the book title on every page it's entirely up to you what you put up there uh, I, I just copied another book that I like the look of and I did the same thing that they did I put the book's title in bold and the chapter title is uh, these are the running titles not, not, not on the first page of the chapter uh, the chapter title is italicized just my choice you you may choose to do something different now to do all of those things all of the things that I've just discussed you need a good deal of control over each chapter or each section of the book and that means carving the book up into sections uh, the other thing that I will just point out, if we look at this information uh, the, these pages in the front matter here we've got six pages including this page that I left blank here. So the seventh page is chapter one and I arrange for that to, to be on an odd number page. Now that means that when you look at chapter one, uh, when you come to chapter one in the book you'll find, because it's an odd number, that it will be on the right hand side as you open the book out. It won't be a left sided page, it will be a right sided page and that is true for every chapter and you have to arrange to do that yourself. If, if, I, go to, uh, if I go to view and then document map we can go to any of these chapters if I pick on uh, Professor Lambert there we see it's an odd number, it's page 25. If I go to chapter uh, 14 the Philadelphia experiment we see that's an odd number so you have got to consider all of this stuff and arrange for all this to happen and uh, you do that primarily by breaking the book up into sections and each chapter becomes a section the front matter is a section and anything that you've got at the back of the book in my case I've got some authors notes that becomes uh, a section as well one thing I'd just like to point out before we go on to sectioning the book up is the importance and value of having your chapter headings set up as headings in Microsoft Word. So 
if, if I come up here into the home tab of the ribbon you can see that when my uh, heading is highlighted it shows up here that it is a heading one I've already nominated that as a heading one if I if I click down here into the body of the text you will see that it's uh, no it's a, a normal type um, setup but going back here to the chapter title if I click on uh, that you, you see it's a heading one now if I want to modify what that heading one looks like I right click on heading one select modify and that shows you how I have it set up at the moment you can see here uh, my heading ones are Garamond typeface with a point size of 14 if I change that in there and click OK that will then get applied to everything that I previously set up as a heading one that will run throughout my book and change all the headings in my book. Um, now the value of doing that, of having your uh, chapter titles and other headings uh, selected as headings in Microsoft Word is that you can uh, arrange for certain things to happen automatically. So for instance now if I come up to the top of the ribbon in, in the uh, click on the view tab and then click on document map you see that everything I have nominated as a heading then appears in this document map and thereafter is very easy for me to navigate through the document through the novel by just clicking on these chapter headings here and as I say that's because they're all nominated as heading ones the second major advantage to to doing this making sure that all your chapter headings are heading ones or heading twos or whatever number you want to give them is that when you build your table of contents uh, to go at the front of the book the software Microsoft software will work from the the headings and it will build them automatically into the table of contents so that saves you a lot of manual input um, because you can have it done automatically okay so having made that point we'll move on to the sectioning alrighty then sectioning uh, so, so here we have my Kindle formatted version of my novel and I want to make this suitable uh, for a create space paperback so the formatting has to be different for that and the place to begin would be turning on the hidden character so if I come to the ribbon at the top I go to the home tab and turn on this character that's now highlighted highlighted which is the show hidden characters button so you can tog toggle on and off the hidden characters so now you can see with with it turned on you can see the line endings that, that you've actually inserted into the file previously and things like page breaks and other characters that are normally hidden so here we are looking at the front matter of my book I want these page breaks in there I want these pages to be divided up by the page breaks but when I come down to the first chapter I want that to be a new section and, and, and as I've said several times this is so that I can retain maximum control over the headers and footers in each section so I've got to take out this page break and replace that with a section break it's easy to do but one little warning put the cursor on the left hand side where you see it now not on the right if you put it on the right and hit delete what will happen is the page break will remain the line ending is now gone and the heading for chapter one has now taken on normal type text which is not what I want so I'm going to undo that and the proper way to do it is put the cursor at the front of the page break as it now is hit delete and now it's gone that's good and now put the page break the section break in so I come to the ribbon at the top I go to page layout breaks and then down here we've got the four different types of section breaks that you can choose now the continuous break is for putting a uh, section break in the middle of a page somewhere so you can have two different sections if we come over here somewhere here two sections on the same page well you don't want that in a novel you want your chapters and other uh, sections to start on new pages so that's no good so I'll put my cursor back at the start of chapter one go back to page layout go to breaks again and let's look at these section breaks again so other options are even page and odd, odd page now as the name would su suggest what those should be doing for you is creating a new section on a new page 
and on either an odd or even page according to which you select. Now the way I was shown that this would work is if I selected odd pages which is what I want, I want all my chapters for, for my particular choice to start on right hand pages and odd pages at that. So I selected odd page and found that it didn't always work, it, did, it was unreliable so that if my pages weren't falling on the right hand side, if my new chapters weren't falling on the on the right side on odd numbers it wasn't adding a new blank page in there for me to make make that happen, to, to make them turn up on the right hand side uh, just basically wasn't working so some of my new chapters were were turning up as even pages on the left hand side so uh, but anyway that's what those things are supposed to do um, so so you, it seems to me that you could either if you, if you want the same design as I've been going for new chapters on the right hand side you could select either odd page or next page so just for the hell of it because it's what I want I'm going to select odd page but it doesn't bear in mind it doesn't necessarily work and you may have to sift through your document and arrange, be, arrange for this to work properly by uh, creating uh, page breaks as necessary but we'll, we'll cover that later um, so I'm going to put odd page in there and you can see if you look at the bottom of my previous page this page here there's a section break in there and it's, it says in brackets odd page by the way before I go on I've mentioned that several times now that I want my new chapters to start on the right hand side as you open the book out that's not a must that's just the way some people design their books and, and novels others will have the new chapter starting on the left side and I presume others still uh, probably don't give a damn and, and are happy to have their new chapter starting either on the left side or on the right side and probably you know for the environment's sake that's probably the most economical thing to do because if you don't care whether your new chapter starts on the left hand side or on the right hand side then you're not inserting blank pages on occasions to make that happen anyway having said all that let's go down to the next chapter and just go through that process again so there's my page break here at the bottom which I don't want so I put my cursor on the left hand side I delete it I come up to page layout breaks and go odd page and there is my section break in there it says section break brackets odd page and I have got to do is another one here that's a short chapter there's my page break put the cursor on the left hand side say delete come up to page layout breaks select odd page although I'm aware that this doesn't always necessarily work uh, but it always creates a section break but they don't always for me on Word 2007 don't always turn up on odd pages on the right hand side if the pages are not naturally falling that way so I I found I had to fix it so I'm going to end this video there and in the next video which I'll call video 2 or something equally obvious uh, I'll show you how to create the headers uh, and the footers and I will just point this out before I before I stop this video and, and that is that if you look at videos by Microsoft trainers and other professional trainers the creation of headers and footers is a simple task um, you, you just watch their video spend a minute or two watching their video unlike my probably overly long video uh, and it looks like a very simple process and you think nothing could be easier but then when you come to put your headers and footers in you find things going wrong such as your uh, new chapters not ending up on odd pages on the right hand side and such as your uh, page numbering not continuing uh, on from one section to another as as they do very simply and easily when 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 the Microsoft trainers produce their videos and so in in my next video I'll show you some of the things that can go wrong and how to avoid those problems and I think it will be very worth while watching for many of you because I spent a couple of days wasting time trying to get headers and footers to work properly so it's not as simple as it's often made out to be things do go wrong and it will be worth your while watching the second video because it may save you an awful lot of time so thanks for listening hope it's been useful and uh, see you in the next video